Here we go. Smart Buildings video cast and podcast for the week ending May 31st, 2020. This is episode 365 where we talk about all things smart building controls and HVAC controls and whatever else your host and mine. The man, the myth, the legend, the secret agent man, Kenny Smyers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania wants to talk about. Kenny, welcome to the show, Big Dog, and it's such a great view how to have a Pittsburgh out of your window there, brother. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Yes, as you can see, this is the beautiful downtown Pittsburgh Three Rivers area. It's called yeah. the Golden Triangle for a reason. You can yeah. see the, yep, the, the gold is just, it's all concentrated here in the middle. Actually, you know, if you look at that river, this this one here, it's the Allegheny River. And uh-huh. then this river here is the Monongahela River. Let's gotcha. see over here. Yeah. And they come together to make the Ohio River. Now, you right. realize that this was one of the most important intersections uh, in the New World. So when the, the Brits and the French were trying to find gateways in, the French already had the, the St. Lawrence Seaway and they already had the, you know, New Orleans. If they would have controlled this river, they would have controlled all the water avenues into the Ohio Valley and, and the West, right? And Pittsburgh so, would have been the New York City instead of, right? No, 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 probably not. But anyhow, on, the, on this side here, this, this is Coal Hill. This, this, this was actually the largest black bituminous coal deposit in North America. So it, it is actually caught on fire once lightning struck it, you know, in, in the early, or 1600 something or other. And it, it stayed on fire for a long time. So the, the bottom line was it was coal rich. It had the waterways there. So it lent itself very readily to the, uh, you know, industrial era. And, and of course, because you had the plentifulness of the coal and, and the proximity of the labor and, and the waterways to transport stuff. So, you know, dude, it just goes to show you that you can't really count on anything. Everything changes, right? I mean, because like you said, you had everything going there and now, you know, who knew? I mean, there's still some of that business, but, and no offense to Pittsburgh, because I think it's a, a marvelous city, but you wouldn't consider it necessarily a gross city like Silicon Valley or San Francisco or whatever, right? Well, the, the money uh, made it important. Like you had the Carnegie's, you had the Mellons, you had the Rock, uh, not the Rockefellers, you had the, um, just, you had, it's the, has this, I believe the largest uh, cultural trust in America. I mean, we had more money on one of the streets in Pittsburgh than any other city except for uh, uh, New York, um, where they have the, uh, what's it called? The stock market right there. Right. It's at, uh, but Wall we had, Street. Yeah, Wall Street. Uh, and we, there, there's a whole row of buildings were built just for literally store cash in there because of the you know, steel mills. So the uh, the bottom line was that uh, we went from, uh, you know, one of the blue collar, the Rust Belt, you know, us, uh, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, uh, Cincinnati, you know, all the way uh, into uh, Michigan uh, and were the Rust Belt. You know, we made all the steel. Uh, and then once these rivers got so polluted that they uh, – EPA came in and shut it down, basically shut all the steel industry down and migrated to Birmingham, Alabama and, um, and, and Indiana. So yeah. that, uh, you know, it's, and now we're, Hey, we have, because of the cultural funds and the money, we had Carnegie Mellon university, university of Pittsburgh. We have a tremendous amount of intellectual, uh, academies, uh, here, at, uh, Robert Morris point park. Uh, there's just college after college because of the, um, the number of people with the money stayed here in Pittsburgh for a while and still has, so that you had this Carnegie Mellon's one of the top schools in, in the world. And, uh, right. And so, so that's why Pittsburgh became really important. We lost our blue collar. We got the white collar. We got UPMC. We got Pittsburgh National or PNC. And then we have uh, investments from, uh, we have uh, Google here. We have, uh, you know, Uber here. Uh, and it's to have proximity to that, that those well, graduate yeah, that, students at CMU. Right, right. No, no. But so, so that's the new currency, right? It used to be cold. Now it's, you know, really smart students. And my point being, Kenny, is that, uh, you know, if you want to know the future, just read history because, you know, there's a saying, nothing changes under the sun, right? It just keeps coming around. And, and, and I think, you know, it, it's at a certain level for me, it's the our industry in just a different way that things are changing. And if you stay still and don't change with the changes, uh, you know, you're going to be as useful as coal in a solar society. 
<laughs> well, you know, or, or you just deplete it, you know, you used it all up, but uh, all the shafts, the mine shafts made for great tunnels, you know, so if you come through Pittsburgh uh, and you come from the airport into the city, you go through uh, the uh, the tunnels there uh, and the Fort Pitt Bridge, uh, the Fort Pitt Tunnels, the Fort Pitt Bridge were previously a mine shaft that they expanded. So uh, we, had, we, we had some of the largest uh, mine, uh, you know, mining works uh, with the, uh, they basically hauled out this part of Pennsylvania. <laughs> there's there's landslide or what do you call it? The, when the land slides. Uh, yeah, but it falls into the, you know, where the old um, shafts were. Um, right. Sure, I can't think of the name of it. My sister's backyard lot, they, they fell down 20 feet and oh, they, wow. Yeah, they, they fixed it, though. So. Well, Kenny, I want to show you something. And, subsidence, uh, land subsidence. Dang. Gotcha. So I want to show you some this really cool hat. And it's from oh, KMC, that is cool. KMC Controls, and it says Live Lucky. And for all our vendors out there, uh, you know, if you got cool swag, uh, it's got to be cool like this hat. Kenny and I will wear it on the show. But, uh, Kenny, I, I also bring that up because our sponsor this week uh, is Platinum Plus Control Trend sponsor KMC Controls is the sponsor this week, and all our sponsors from the Control Trends Awards will be sponsoring shows as part of their package for their sponsorship of the Control Trends Awards last year. So today is a KMC show, and uh, so got that out of the way. What else you want to talk about before we bring our guests on? Well, the COVID nineteen journey continues. Uh, we don't want to belabor anybody with uh, you know the facts and figures on it, uh, and and uh, you know, but but I think the journey has moved into a better uh, point, and it. Uh, Pennsylvania, we're went from yellow, and we're going to go to green next week, which means we can go to restaurants, um, movie theaters. Uh, they'll start some entertainment venues. We'll kick back up. The parks may open up, you know, but uh, again, social distancing. You know, everybody needs to make sure they keep their PPEs handy, personal protection equipment. You know, the masks or, or, or not necessarily the masks. The face covering has to be, uh, and they and they're really going hard on that. So, uh, if you well, the face cover does the face covering actually work? I heard you need one of those. Uh, yeah, really Aspirators. sort of industrial. Yeah. Well, industrial you know, I, yeah. I can give you the layman's version. You know, I mean, the, the, the reality is, is it does not prevent the uh, the COVID-19, such a small, uh, the viral uh, mist is like right. you know, less than two microns. And, and it takes a special uh, face mask or, or um, right, aspirator right. or whatever to, to filter out something that small. But it, it does two things that they say. Number one, it prevents any, uh, if you have a sneeze or you're coughing or speaking loudly and you're putting any kind of uh, mist uh, in, into the air, that facial covering will prevent that. And two, if you, it's like having a sore arm and then putting a the sling on it. You know, if so many people wear slings, yeah, automatically enforces that distance and, and it helps to yeah. reinforce the fact that you're being conscientious of keeping yourself clean, keeping right. your hands clean, whatever. Right. So, so in other words, it's more about preventing your output versus protecting you from input. I, I would say, yeah. Uh, yeah. unless you've got a really expensive mask, yes, correct. Well, yeah, yeah. So I got you. I got you. Well, cool, Kenny Smyers. So COVID goes on, and when COVID goes on, as we fond of saying, Kenny's great, 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 great <laughs> grandfather in China, Bruce Lee Smyers, he used to say, with great chaos comes great opportunity. So part of what we've been doing on the show is bringing people on, talking about, uh, you know, among other things, the opportunities are being created by this uh, terrible virus. So Kenny Smyers, man, so, so happy we got our good friend back in the saddle. He went over to Finland for a while, hung out with the Finns, doing saunas and uh, swimming in the snow and stuff like that. I guess he got tired of that, but he's back. He's back at KMC Controls. How about introducing him? Eric, I'd love to. We have Mr. Tim Vogel, director of IoT. Tim was the former marketing director of marketing for KMC, and now he's in, now he's in a real hot seat. Welcome to the show, Tim. Welcome, Tim. It is fantastic to be back. Feels like home. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, first of all, I got a comment. You got a really nice hat on there, man. I think I like your hat better than mine, and I didn't think I could ever like anybody's hat better than mine because this is my KMC hat. It says <laughs> Live Lucky. So yeah. uh, it's one of the coolest hats ever, but man, what a great looking hat you have there. Is that the Go Braves. Man? I've been a Braves, Braves fan. Yeah, I've been a Braves fan ever since, uh, ever since I, I was born in Georgia. Moved away when I was eight, and so gotcha. I was just stuck. Yeah, nice, well, nice, nice. They had the glory days uh, for many years. They were they were America's team. Yeah, in the nineties, firing squad. Josh That's right. Holtz, and then you got Sid Bream from the Pirates, and he was out at the plate, and they called him safe for some unknown reason. And that he, this, he was not out. He at was the out. It's that, 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 that Sid Bream was one of the fastest base runners ever. For all he was the slowest man know, in baseball. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, Sid Bream was, uh, you know, about what 260 pounds, and and you know, uh, 
he didn't move very fast, but he went from first to home. The catcher had the ball when he was at second, waiting to tag him out, and Tim Bream still made it in. So he's a great slider, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the umpires behind the plate, he saw his front leg go across the plate, but the hook side, the hook leg was tagged before that first, before he slid over the plate. I, I reviewed you, that. You, you know what that means though, right, Timmy? And then we'll, we'll get on the business. It just means any Pittsburgh pirate is really good at cheating. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> all right. Tim, well, Tim, Tim, yeah, it's yeah, exciting. Yeah, Tim, you all right, Tim, you went away for a while, man. Tell us about your experience. Did you just get tired of uh uh sitting in the snow and getting in the sauna with all the Finnish people? Or you know, you went away and you came back. Tell us about that. No, the sauna, that was the hardest thing to leave. Uh but no, no, it was a great group of people. Yeah, I was I was at it. We were in the industrial world, primarily in mining, wastewater, pulp paper. And we were trying to uh, kick up an IoT program that was very successful in Europe and just bring it over here. Well, during that time, I learned a ton about industrial automation, uh, a lot about how they focus on uh, different things than what we focus on in the building environment, right? I mean, it's much more production oriented, uh, life, life um, system or um, life safety. Mi mission critical life safety systems is a huge part of it. They talk about milliseconds, you know, instead of seconds or minutes in the building space. So there's a lot of difference over there. But no, it was just, it came down to the end of last year. And uh, KMC, in my opinion, is just one of the best places to work. The people are phenomenal. It's a product that you really feel strongly about and that you're proud to support. And everything that was happening on the commander side, uh, I was I was kind of sad to leave. And so I reached out to Richard Newberry and said, hey, I would love an opportunity to come back if, if an opportunity comes up. And he said, absolutely. And I said, perfect. And so now I'm back as uh, director of IoT. It's a lot of fun. Nice. And, and just for our audience to know, Richard Newberry is one of our favorite people. Uh, among other things, we consider him the best dressed man in uh, the controls industry. I mean, he's extremely Chris dapper. Eich yeah. Chris Eichmann's a close second from JCI. But uh, so, you know, I guess you guys are doing a lot of Zoom meetings. Is uh, Richard, uh, you know, decking out and doing his uh, suits and ties and all his great looking clothes on the Zoom meetings? You know, I like to uh, I like to joke around with Richard. He has uh, several very good looks, and uh, but one of my favorites is T-shirt Richard. And so I always <laughs> say, if you see T-shirt Richard, then you know you got to catch them all. You've caught them all, and uh, so we're seeing a lot of T-shirt Richard these days, which is great. Uh, but no, yeah, all this work from home stuff. The KMC team just as a whole has been extremely resilient, and it's it's almost like business as usual. It's it's been incredible, phenomenal. Very, very cool. So uh, you came back, you got a new position at, uh, at KMC. Talk about that and what do you like about it and what are the challenges and, uh, and yeah. yeah. So when I was previously at KMC, I was in marketing. Uh, we helped, you know, we did a lot of work on our YouTube content and videos and, you know, trying to drive as much, you know, we're the building geniuses. And so we wanted to prove that with the content that we were putting out. Um, and then when I left, I went into a sales position and that was something new for me. And now coming back, I'm, I'm very much in a sales role, developing channels and partners and, and, uh, also additional like vendor partners that we could integrate with and that sort of thing. And I, you know, I learned a lot and I have learned a lot and now reflecting back on, you know, when I was in marketing, I'm very proud of what we did. But, you know, when you're out there talking to customers, it's just a different perspective, right? You learn a lot about, you know, what is the important messaging? What is the kind of, what are the phrases or the terms that can better sell a product or get into the minds of, of people that, you know, have an issue or have a problem? And uh, yeah, so I, I'm excited to kind of now help, you know, drive marketing messaging and, and sales strategy and all that for the KMC Commander product with the experience in marketing and how that is executed. We have an excellent director of marketing now and Jason Mills. And so being able to partner with him and, you know, both of us tag team these ideas and strategies, it's a lot of fun and it's exciting on top of, you know, building an incredible smart building platform too. Right. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, you, you, you said it really well. And I think you have an appreciation for marketing because it is, it isn't as easy as it looks and mm -hmm. messaging is critical, but 
you know, if you think about how, uh, what you just said there, and, and we went from like a wireless uh, that was kind of new and, and was going to be the savior for technology to get it into buildings or whatever, then IoT, uh, you know, the Internet of Things you know, popped up, and that was the that was the uh, the jargon. Just kept you know was surrounded by IoT was surrounded by new terms and mobile first. But then, as we have learned recently, all that was uh, for a very important foundation because now we're talking about remote monitoring and and control and being the most critical things that we can do. Uh, you know, in our HVAC build, building domain, is the technology that had been put into place, the wireless, the IoT, that advancement, that accelerated mobile first. Now. Uh, really played an instrumental role during this most recent uh, COVID-19 thing we've been dealing with the pandemic, but it shows the way for the future is to get that remote monitoring in place and to get that remote control in place. And the K KMC commander, which uh, we're going to be talking about uh, next, is 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 really a, a, f a fundamental first step in the in that in that uh, you know world where we need to rely on IoT and remote connectivity and monitoring. Really good point, yes. Kenny. And, and Tim, for our audience who might not know about the Commander, I think most of them probably do, but just give them a brief overview of the Commander, where it's been and where it is now, and where it's going. Yeah, absolutely. So KMC Commander is primarily a cloud-based SaaS platform for smart buildings that could bring in any sort of building automation data, whether it's KMC controls or any of the other guys. Once we have that data, then you can run trends, alarms, set schedules, change set points. So it's not only monitoring, but you're also able to control. And then because of the way we've built it, we now have, uh, it, it is a true platform that you could build on using our core fully documented REST API. If you wanna run analytics, partner with any analytics company you wanna partner with, and then we can build an API hook and funnel all the data out of the building that you're already collecting directly into the analytics. And now you get a whole bunch of additional uh, value out of that. So, you know, we've tried to make it as open, secure and scalable as possible, affordable for a small building all the way up to, you know, a 600 building school system, uh, whatever it is, we're, we're able to handle that in a, a modern technological way. Well, the, um, KMC Controls, I, I just, uh, again, we're always one of my favorite control companies. The, the history is amazing. Uh, you know, I remember how the, uh, doing the control trends in the past, how we, we learned con that KMC grew organically from the heartland of, of, of the United States and, and did a lot of behind the curtains OEMing for mm. the pneumatic worlds and some of the other things. But uh, I think KMC was one of the first uh, companies to come out with a five-year warranty. Any product made by KMC was warrantied beyond everybody else's expectations. So mm -hmm. they had that durability, really quality, but not the gaudy quality, but the, you know, the quiet, really well-engineered quality. Uh, hey, now, uh, hang on a second. Did you just say gaudy quality? Yeah, I did. That's because just, that, That's an interesting distinction. I think it gets back to then you got Richard Newberry who's very elegant. So it would make sense that, uh, that, that the KMC commander would be understated and elegant quality versus I'm talking about quality. The, the gaudy quality Mercedes elegant quality maybe being a Porsche you know and, and the rugged quality being you know something like the Volkswagen you know mm -hmm. they're all quality I, one, one I think I think Kenny's given your marketing team a little bit of a, a great buzz thing to use I think you can sort of develop <laughs> this thing like a KMC commander hashtag not, we're not gaudy we're not gaudy yeah yeah <laughs> I was, what I was trying to do is just get, get some stable datum in there how KMC has been in this business forever and it started you know the grassroots uh, were always you know making things work and, and just being mm -hmm. the quiet partner that the you know, stuff was reliable so reliable that it made the majority of the pneumatic receiver controllers for the whole dang world but it the, just the point, works the, the point that uh, mm -hmm. I was getting to is that you know KMC again doesn't uh, doesn't uh, it, it, it's like a silent uh, growth organically. It doesn't, it doesn't have the big uh, marketing buzz, the Madison Avenue style of approach. It's, it's mm -hmm. word of mouth, it's partners. And, and right. my next transition point was that- Well, well hang on, Kenny, I want, I want to hop in real quick. Real, I think you're going someplace else, but I, I want to stay something else based on what you're saying, which sure. is, yeah, you've got that sort of uh, uh, family style business, but, but, you know, and, but you're also the commander, I mean, partner with Dell and Intel for crying mm -hmm. out loud. So mm -hmm. it's like you've got these big, gaudy quality people with our, uh, you know, <laughs> homegrown family business, right? So, I mean, so I don't want people you left with the impression that, you know, it's just KMC doing this on their own, although they could. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you guys mm -hmm. are really partnered with some real heavyweights as well. Yeah, no, I, I think, Ken, I think you're absolutely right. We have 
a firm foundation and legs to stand on because we don't have to convince you of our quality. We've proved it over 50 years. There you go. And our KMC Commander platform, it is a game changer in a lot of ways because we are taking a very IT centric, you know, uh, modern software, SaaS software approach, and we're applying it to an industry that is resistant to change and that has been built primarily on uh, buying a project out and locking people in for 10 years and making all the money on the back end. And so we, we take a different approach. And there's been a lot of companies that have come into this industry trying to revolutionize with a really big, fancy, gaudy dashboard. And a year to 18 months down the road, they're gone. Every IBCon we've gone to, there's a new vendor that pops up. And then they're gone the next year or two years after that because they don't have legs to stand on. And that has been uh, the thing that has really differentiated us and given us a competitive advantage. And even some of the bigger guys, obviously they've been successful, which is great. But uh, you know, even some of the bigger guys have just taken old product, polished it, and then put it out as something new. And it's still just as expensive, it's still just as difficult to use, and it's still just as proprietary. That is not a way forward, and that's not what IoT and, and technology and, and even the marketplace has tolerance for moving forward. Well, yeah, so. and then I, I think another uh, corollary uh, aspect of, of, of duration is partnerships, you know, and, and people that you know, started on board, whether they were distributors or, or contractors, you know, that were engaged early in it, uh, you know, and, and the loyalties of the programs and, and the conviction uh, to remain loyal to those programs by KMC, I think it's really, it's, it speaks for itself. It's, a, it's Again, it's a quiet, powerful message, but it, it, it's there and nobody knows how they got all there, but it's, it's certainly there, like you said. And, uh, and I think you guys have a lot of interesting things for the future. Right. Well, well yeah, I, to Kenny's point, Tim, and I'll, let me hop in, just tell us about your partners and your partner program, because that's, the other part of the equation, right? You got to have a great product, but you have to have great partners as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, um, it, to go back just one, one step is consistency and trust. Those are two things that we've built and that we've maintained. And again, one of the reasons I came back to KMC, I love it. When it comes to partners, you know, Intel has been a partner of ours since the beginning, uh, from, you know, going down this IOT road, um, they've been excellent partners. They were the ones that introduced us to Dell and Dell has been a great partner and we've built our, our uh, platform primarily on them uh, for the last five years. And uh, it's been great. The other thing that we're excited to, to talk about is in the coming months, we're gonna be releasing uh, an additional option using the Advantech or, or an Advantech gateway. And you know, the other nice thing about that is just like the Dell gateway, you know, it's almost kind of a, a drop in for our, our current option, but it gives additional options for uh, more cellular. And we're excited to talk about that more in the future. Um, they are a little bit smaller than Dell uh, and, and you know, the, there's advantages that come with that. But just like Dell, Dell and Advantech are both very IT friendly gateways. And as these operational systems get smarter, you have to interface with IT. You have to be comfortable with those conversations. There's a lot of talk in the industry about, you know, having separate networks, you know, just so you don't have to mess with IT. But at the end of the day, IT is still kind of your gateway to the internet. And so you have to be able to communicate with them. So even if you have separate networks, you still have to be uh, mindful of what, you know, what IT's influence is going to be. Um, that's, that's a conversation we're very comfortable having. Yeah, you know, that is a, a a very important thing you just said there. And, and, and if we can back up just a little bit, because mm -hmm. uh, we were seeing this uh, kind of separation of states where you either have a building automation network or you have the IT network and you're part of it. And mm -hmm. you have two f kind of factions now where you have two you know, people that believe the fastest, best way is to have your own building automation network and you control your own destiny and you don't ask for permissions and then uh -huh. wait for this and that and the other. Um, and then you have the other where you kind of, uh, de-obligate yourself. I mean, you learn enough about it to play in the game and you ask for your IP, uh, you know, what your, your uh, IP addresses are and, and where you fit in on, and what the part of the, um, the uh, what is it called? The switch or the big, the routers. And, and uh, mm -hmm. over in Europe, Eric and I got to see uh, a new way that they're doing business in, in England. And they, they basically, the general contractor has, has a, you know, they have the data center and you get your, on the, uh, you get number 79 through 83 for your IPs through your, for your connections into the, uh, mm -hmm. the switches. Uh, so uh, 
that was like a, a maximum case where, or, or, you know, just the incredible, you know, yeah. all the IT responsibilities was on the general contractor's plate and the, everybody else came to him and got a little, uh, you know, basically your, your phone numbers of, of where you were going to integrate into that system. That to me mm -hmm. sounded, you know, that was like way out there. Uh, so what is your thoughts on the building automation network and the uh, IT just kind of being a surrogate to the I IOT? Yeah. Well, I think that, Many traditional systems have not invested in cybersecurity and have not built strong enough cyber pol or security policies to match what IT expectations are and what the IT world has done. And because of that, they're finding themselves having to have this segregation of networks because they, you know, they can't play in the IT space. You know, they don't have the the hardware or policies to do it. Um, if you want to look forward, so. You can talk short term, long term, however you define it. Let's say within the first, within the next five years, um, you know, having separate networks. Okay, sure. If you want to advocate for that, that's fine. After that, technology is advancing so quickly. The bad guys are getting smarter. Operational systems are getting smarter. If you're not prioritizing security and you can't play in the IT space, then you know you're going to be having some major issues. And that kind of goes back then to our partnerships. And our channel, as we drive new channels, and we've been talking about Intel ITPs or IT managed service providers for a couple of years now, and we're slowly building uh, several channel partners that play in that space. So what they are always doing is they are, um, you know, managing cybersecurity and networking for small businesses or medium-sized businesses, maybe some national accounts, making sure that their security policies are where they need to be, that they're using the right hardware, that they're using the right encryption, whatever it is. And then you get a building automation system in there and they're like, well, this is not even close to what the requirements are that I require. And then when we talk about uh, KMC Commander and IoT, the gateway we're using, how we communicate to the cloud, how all that is encrypted, then they're like this, you know, this fits into our IT policy. So again, that's why we're comfortable having those conversations and partner with hardware vendors that help do that as well. Right, right. Well, Tim, I want to, I want to cycle back to the commander again real quick, because, you know, one of the, you know, you, you listen to this and you go, this has got to be an expensive controller. And, uh, and let's put it in perspective. I know many integrators, service con type contractors that will actually put this in free of charge as long as you sign for, sign up for a service agreement, because it allows mm -hmm. them to, the cost to serve to go down the service contractors. And, uh, but it's also scalable, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go from very small to very large. But uh, I think with everything else, that's, that's got to be a, a big advantage. From a marketing standpoint, how do you say that in a way that you're not sounding gaudy? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Eric, obviously we're all things to all people and we never make a mistake. I mean, it's that simple. <laughs> yeah, no. So affordability and scalability have to work together. So if you want to put KMC Commander into a small building out the door to the end user with a basic open proprietary system or I'm sorry, open proprietary uh open that sounds like a great system. marketing <laughs> it does, right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> again we're all things to all people. Yeah. Uh no, you know we're we're talking a matter of uh you know $7,000 maybe, you know, and that that gives a basic system that doesn't have built-in automation system, right? And just like a, a VVT system or a basic zoning system. It gives it a cloud-based BAS, right? You know, race to the small space. That's what you always say. Yeah. Uh, so that that's what that is. But then if you want to scale that out to, you know, 200 buildings, you know, it's a matter of, first of all, the deployment can take less than an hour. You take, put the gateway in, screw it, you know, onto uh a DIN rail or onto a wall mount, plug in an ethernet cable and leave and do all the rest in your office, right? So we're reducing bucket time or reducing the amount of time that someone's out in the field. And then it allows you to very quickly deploy to multiple buildings, right? So, you know, you're not spending an entire day at each building and now it's a 90 day process. Um, so that's that. But then, you know, again, scaling out you know, economies of scale with time, effort, labor, commissioning, all those things. And you talked about bundling it with a service agreement. <clears throat> That's a great way to do it. We have lots of customers that do that. Uh, another thing is you could make it part of your ESCO or performance contract. Well, we have some people that sell it um, just as a, you know, here's a solution for tenants to get access. 
So, you know, they're not necessarily buying the box or the cloud. They're just saying, download the app, uh, you know, give, give me a first name, last name and an email address. And now the person in office 201 can have, you know, access to their VAV controller, which is kind of a good talking point when you talk about COVID, you know, rather than going up to the wall in a shared space and touching a thermostat, well, you just pull it up on your phone, you know, now you don't have to go touch something that, you know. That's a great transition point. And I'll tell you what, the, uh, the touchless world is going to become a reality. Uh, Eric and I spoke with Ron Zimmer last week uh, from CABA. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how, you know, they're, they're, they're looking at an initiative where they see how many things they can do to eliminate touching, you know, going, adjusting knobs, turning the light switches, you know, just make it what, why we technology is there. We just don't use it. We can have voice activated everything mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, or, or whatever. And I think the COVID-19 issues are going to accelerate all that touchless technology you're talking about. But um, you do uh, have a lot of C's associated with KMC, you know, so you have cruder manufacturing controls, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or corporation, cruder cor cruder <laughs> manufacturing corporations, KMC. But you have KMC Commander, Conquest, Connect. Uh, you guys got a thing with C's, and and then COVID fits right right nicely into that, huh? Yeah. KMC COVID. Yeah. <laughs> no. Co corrector. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. yeah, it is interesting. You know, yeah, we've been talking about the other C word. Yeah, that that everyone's talking about. Uh, yeah, that's coronavirus and the thing that it's been doing to our economy, to schools, to people's, you know, livelihoods and work, you know, it, it's crazy. But then how you interact with these buildings that are now either unoccupied or less occupied or the schedules are changing. Uh, you have people advocating that you just run the system 100% of the time now. And so now there's energy impacts not only to the building and cost, but now to the grid as a whole. So now you have energy and utility companies that are trying to figure out, okay, you know, how do we handle this now? Because we never build our grid to be a hundred percent all the time. Um, so it, there's just this cascading effect, another C word. Um, nice. Thank you. But uh, yeah, so I think the biggest thing and ASHRAE's, you know, they put out some guidelines. I'm sure everyone's been talking about those. Um, you know, I think th that's a good starting point. The biggest thing is indoor air quality, safety for occupants, comfort and peace of mind, um, but then obviously cost. How much is all of this going to cost? Another C word. Another cost. Yeah, another C word. You were listening. You were listening that time. For, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, we have a client that we've been talking to for a long time. We're in phase two implementation of KMC Commander. We're going to spread it across the entire school systems for a ma major metropolitan area. And they looked into adding UV to all of their systems. And they're like, it is just so expensive. Like there's no way we could do it. And so now they're looking at all these other matters of, or other ways that they can do it, whether it's uh, plasma or deionization or you know, any, number, any number of, any number of things. It, there's a lot of interesting technologies that we're all learning about that I guess have been out there, but again, because of the cost, no one's prioritized it. But the other thing is indoor air quality and how do you man how do you deploy something to all your buildings so that you can very easily and quickly see what your indoor air quality coefficient is or, or different metrics. And so a lot of these BAS systems have means and ways to calculate these things, but they don't have means and ways to quickly scale all that to a single dashboard. KMC Commander, that has been one of the things that we have been talking about and evangelizing for the last five years. Whatever the BAS system is, go put Commander out there, bring the data to the cloud, and you could stand up a dashboard in less than 20 minutes, um, you know, wow. once, all the uh, once all the data is flowing. And if you want to now aggregate that across all your buildings, obviously there's time to deploy the gateways and get things, you know, discovered and all that. But again, to get a dashboard to any audience, you know, it's not a difficult thing to do. Those are all inherent uh, functionalities into the system that we've built. So if you want a principal to have a dashboard, a teacher to have a way to control the air quality and see what's going on, if you want a, a math teacher to be able to, you know, pull out a CSV file of the data and teach the kids a multiple regression on how the indoor air quality in that room is compared to the room next door or something like that, you know, th those are all things that, you know, now you could use this as a teaching opportunity. You could use it as a way to quickly stand up an IOT platform that could be expanded later. Uh, I mean, and we're doing a 
I mean, we're just, we're fast tracking a lot of development around this IAQ uh, because we see it as, as a huge opportunity well, because yeah. then it also lays a baseline to do all these additional improvements right. and know exactly what you need to do and when, and then triage all those right. things out. Well, you know, Tim, we were talking again with Ron and several other people, and one of the trends we're, we're seeing in space vis-a-vis COVID, COVID is that, it, you know, you're going to have to make stuff visible in terms of how you're protecting people and so on and so forth. And then the other thing that we talked about was for just from a legal standpoint, it seems like if you're a building owner, you better have some sort of documentation, some sort of data that supports it. As Kenny says, you, you know, you did a reasonable amount of stuff to make sure your tenants are safe because I don't think we've seen any COVID lawsuits yet, but I suspect that, um, there's a couple the of them lawyer, up here. We got, we got yeah. to at least a big one here at nursing home, uh, where, where, they are saying that the nursing home did not take those reasonable man uh, provisions right. and, and measures to, to protect a, a loved one that passed away. Right. And, and that, so, yeah, there's right. a couple of them. But, 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 but Kenny, what I'm hearing Tim say that the commander offers is a really low cost, quick way, no matter what system you're using to uh, be able to dashboard and start collecting that data if you don't already have an analytics platform or way to collect data. Correct, Tim? That's exactly right. Yeah, you know, we, we want to be... We want to be BAS agnostic, hardware agnostic. You know, obviously you're going to utilize uh, drivers and translators from, you know, guys that have been out there a long time building those drivers and translators. Um, okay. And, you know, there's, all, there's always going to be a level of integration, especially if something is old or legacy. But again, it's just about, you know, how can we stand up something quickly and make it available to a wide audience so that there's full transparency on what anyone is doing uh, to help curve COVID uh, transmission and and then um, limit that liability. Well, obviously, I'm going to throw a couple more C words up there. Uh, Eric gets credit for coed. He threw it in there. Uh, it was a, that was a Freudian slip. Uh, coed. He, he, he went to say COVID. Yeah. And then I want to say Freudian slip. And I want to say that, <laughs> that, that that we have what we're seeing here. What, what you just said, Tim, is remarkable because I mean, just the conversation we're having here was not possible five years ago. I mean, people would not even think it'd be it would be unheard of to say I'm going to put an overlay into somebody else's system. But the reality is that we have to have this collaboration and co-opetition. In other words, the, the market size in North America is gargantuan and nobody's really, really hitting deep into it. Nobody's taking shovel fulls out of it, but there are mm -hmm. all the technologies there. You mentioned something about the resistance. There seems to be these, these uh, un, un, undescribable or indescribable barriers of, of acceptance. Now this COVID thing is going to wear away some of that, that, that envelope of resistance because as Eric said, there's going to be codes coming. ASHRAE is going to push it. You know, ASHRAE, like you said, it's, it's dilution and ventilation and filtration. You know, and then the dilution, they're saying 24-7, you're gunning everything up to get air changes so that there is a bad air, COVID-infected uh, air, or, you know, infected air, push it out of the space. You know, after every, after every ICU occupation, they have mm -hmm. to blow so much fresh air through that space and then come in and sanitize it. You know, so... Air is a premium. I mean, everything, and so the ability to document that, dashboard it and document it, you know, and archives for in the event there is liabilities. I mean, you get excited about, you know, we have all the technology and, and basically it's the stuff we're really good at. It's air, it's water, it, it's, you know, building domain stuff, you know, temperature, humidity, pressure, you know, things that we really do have a great skill and knowledge base on. We just need to implement it. And I think you guys got some fantastic, uh, you know, uh, hardware and software solutions that are, are going to let KMC kill it. Now, kill it is a letter K, so I couldn't get a C out of that. I tried my best, but uh, we'll have analyze to change. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they spell it somewhere with a C, Kenny. So, uh, <laughs> hey, listen, Tim, we, I got a text uh, from our audience here. Uh, a okay. Rob Rob Allen wants to know where who's the best distributor in Atlanta, and and where can people go in Atlanta to get your KMC products? Let me Google really quick. I'm not sure. Oh, Rob just texted back and said, "You mean you don't?" Okay, all right, go ahead. Oh no, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> no, obviously Stromquist. Oh, There's no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no question at all. Yeah. Stromquist.com. Yes, and I'm hoping to uh, I'm hoping to come down and visit you guys here soon. That would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah ab ab absolutely. Well, Tim, you know, speaking of that, I mean, obviously this has you know changed how people interact with their customers and their mm -hmm. clients. Uh, talk a little bit about what KMC is doing vis-a-vis -vis sales and uh, working with their partners and customers. Yeah, so just generally speaking, we're utilizing technology as best as we can, right? Um, I've never had a calendar so full of meetings in, in my career, and I think there's a lot of other people that are feeling the same way. Uh, 
which is a good thing. You're able to have a lot more conversations than maybe you typically would because people have the time for them. Uh, but nothing replaces that face to face, you know, uh, I'll say it handshake, you know, uh, there's, you know, sitting across from a table, sharing a meal, that sort of thing. You know, that's where relationships are really built. Um, but the other cool thing is, you know, you kind of get this interesting look into people's lives and you see that you, 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 you get the reminder of things you already knew. These are people with families and animals and, uh, you know, they're managing hard times too. Uh, and I think, so this is a, a good opportunity for all of us to kind of deepen relationships in that way. That's just going to make it even sweeter once we can get back on the road and start seeing people and, and shaking hands again and, and, you know, meeting across tables. Nice. I think you're so right. Yeah. The, the, um, it's not even warm much. That, that's a great, um, sentiment and summary because I mean, look at all the, uh, the things that we, uh, Jim Jancy, you know, Jim Jancy, uh, Eric yeah. his daughter is getting married today. And hopefully the rain doesn't treat her unkindly, but they had a big wedding that was, uh, you know, canceled, you know, and then uh, uh, my brother David's daughter graduated from uh, John Carroll uh, College, you know, it was a big moment. And and all these things have been just, you know, basically didn't happen. All the graduations, all, all, even funerals. We mm -hmm. have people that, you know, their dearly beloved mother passed away and they couldn't have a, a you know, a funeral, you know, a normal funeral. So you're right. There's been a lot of hardships that, you know, Although they weren't lethal and they weren't, you know, World War Five or Six or whatever, World War COVID, it, it still took something away, it changed all of our lives in a single moment, like a, you know, nine eleven event. That you know, it's just nothing is going to be quite the way it was. Uh, real estate, they're saying that they're not going to rebound to two thousand nineteen numbers to twenty twenty three, and and you know, so you're going to be having less and lower, uh, you know, amounts of, of lease. Uh, cost or you're able, you're not able to charge what you you should be able to and then all these buildings have to be modified so i think having these um you know the, the commander uh kmc solutions are are very important for everyone to really uh learn about and share and i think making it easier for the contractors is really important too you know you were saying mm -hmm. too that you're taking advantage of the iot technology the technology is here it's just a matter of marketing and messaging and, and people getting you know breaking through that resistance you know and, yeah. and now the building owners are, are, are looking at how they got to get all these things together as quickly as possible the kmc solutions certainly serve themselves uh, very well for the solutions they're looking for yeah, yeah. now to no to, i'm sorry eric but to go back to your other question so you know less about sales and relationship but just some other things that we're doing um we're doing a lot of webinars we just kicked off a weekly webinar series that we're doing surrounding uh, covid and controls um, i took part in one and presented on how iot and analytics can help give you better indoor air quality. We did that with one of our analytics partners, Resolute BI. So I'd encourage everyone to go check that out. Advantech, uh, we did a webinar with them not too long ago, but then also a podcast where we talked a lot about smart buildings and, and COVID and things that are changing there. And a big, big part of that, again, is kind of more IT focused is being able to integrate. Um, but yeah, so... Good stuff. But I, I still have I still have uh, free spots in my calendar, so if anyone wants a demo, just reach out to me. Well, now I, they might want you to play the guitar for them. I see the guitar in the background. But Tim, if you will send us the links to those uh, the the podcasts and the other webinar you mentioned, we'll put, we'll post them in the show notes. So our audience yeah. will be able to get them. Perfect. Listen, I'll get them to you. Listen, uh, is you know anything else you want to share about Commander in the future? I think you did a great job with it. But if there's anything else new that's coming out, you want to let us know about? You're welcome to. Sure. Well, I'll just say that I, you know, I was gone for about a year. Uh, I am so impressed with what the team was able to accomplish in those 12 months. Uh, now being just kind of more, uh, more close to the roadmap and the development side of it. I could not be more excited about where we're going and what we're doing and, and what's coming down the line. I'd love to tell you more about it, but I just simply can't. But I will say, I, I talked a little bit about um, how we're fast tracking some IAQ stuff. And we're, you know, we're excited to kind of make a bigger deal about that here in the next month or so. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just have a solid platform to be getting data out of these buildings, and we can push it anywhere anyone needs to send it. And so proud of the team. Everyone, you know, it's a great organization, great team, great group of people. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you could email me anytime. You should throw that in your show notes. 
And if you have any uh, control needs in Atlanta, you can go to strongquiz.com. There you go. Very well said. Hey, Kenny, Tim, I, Tim, I Tim, got Tim, one Tim. final question after you ask yours, Kenny, okay? No, no. I was going to say, Tim, at the time you spent in marketing, didn't do you any harm, okay? <laughs> nice, nice. Thank you. Well, listen, uh, I've gotten several uh, texts along the way regarding our first question, which is uh, Richard's new wardrobe, the T-shirt, Richard. And these come from uh, Jay Young, uh, Ken Sinclair, several other people. They're asking, does Richard... With the t-shirt, is he one color? Does he break the colors up? Is he all black? Is he all white? Is it, does he have logos on the t-shirt? Uh, you know, for the, the, the executive who wants to be cool like Richard, can you give him the guidelines on the t-shirts, please? Yeah, I will just say that uh, he's very eclectic in his choices, you know, and he likes to mix it up. But that's just Richard. He's a man of mystery and nuance. And I don't think, uh, I don't think anyone would be able to put him in any box. Uh, yeah. He's boxless. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah. Somebody wants to know: Does he does he do any Disney T-shirts, or do they have logos, or are they just solid colors? Uh, all of them. Yeah, I think it's all of it. And he may, you know, he's a big Disney guy, big Disney fan, has been yeah. for a long time. So, so, so listen, uh, you know, one marketing idea before we hop off here, which is I think that anybody that signs up, they should get a Richard Newberry T-shirt, right? And maybe Richard would sign it for him. Uh, can we work out a deal like that? <laughs> Eric, nothing would make me happier. I will start working on that right now. In fact, I'm going to text Richard and say, just finished podcast well, with Control Trends. Right. Get ready. Well, listen, I'm large. Okay. If you send me one with an autograph, I'll wear it on the show. Just get it up here where people can see it. And, you know, Kenny yes. and I will wear swag, but it has to be cool swag like this cool KMC hat, which I'm sure people can get as well. Tim, thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you. KMCcontrols.com. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. Always, always. Keep up the good work, brother. All right, man. Kenny, great stuff from our friend Tim Vogel. Man, what do you think of Tim? He's awesome, isn't he? He sure has. I remember uh, meeting him many years ago, and he was uh, green, and uh, but energetic and very intelligent, very well educated, and, and very enthusiastic about his position. He loved marketing, and, and he he made sure that we knew that he was available because he was just really anxious to talk about the stuff he loved, and that was KMC products. And to see him go away, which probably was very beneficial for him, because he had a whole different point of view of the world, learned some uh, new things with industries, learned about the you know critical environments versus you know HVAC environments. But he comes back to KMC, you know, incredibly motivated, but more intelligent. He grew. He, now he's not green anymore. He's he's an accomplished marketeer, but he also has sales now, and uh, and he's really really glad to be where he's at because he loves IoT, and then he's the director of IoT for KMC, which is a growing company. And, and they're feeding, uh, you know, you know, good stuff into to scalable solutions that, uh, are, as he he put, it, very small, uh, scalable solutions that are affordable that can go from one building to two hundred buildings. And and uh, for him, it doesn't get much better than that. Well, I tell you what, he's he's really one of the great great up and comers, and just a likable, likable guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him, there's just nothing not to like about the guy. And Kansas has got such a great team. Somebody we don't talk a lot about is uh, Doug Miller. I think he's the president of KMC now. And Doug, you know, came up through the ranks. He used to be our rep uh, in Atlanta. He's worked his way up. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy. And the technical people they have on board are just uh, unsurpassed. I think Dave Bowman was one of them. He's been a Control Trends Awards uh, uh, Best Technical Support winner in the past. So it's just a great team. And, of course, led by uh, the Cruder family and Richard Newberry, one of our favorite people. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting my Richard Newberry T-shirt. I don't know about you. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get an extra large. You said large. I don't think it would fit very well. It would fit, but it would be tight. <clears throat> yeah, no, I got you. I'm surprised you didn't ask for a Richard Newberry golf shirt, but I don't know whether Richard plays golf or not. He is such an interesting cat, but uh, I've never heard him talk about golf. But uh, the T-shirts, man, I think that's it. I think we all got to get that. We're going to, we, you know, you you deal with all the deep stuff about, you know, how we're going to integrate with IT, the IT world and Silicon Valley and all that. And the one thing we haven't talked about is wardrobe yet. And I think, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to integrate. We've got to look like Steve Jobs and, and the folks out there, right? Well, you know, I, I, was, I was tripping up there for a little while. I was trying to think of the ports. I couldn't think of the word port. Remember, we were talking about the, yeah. the GC contractor in England where they had that uh, project they showed us. And, and I just remember looking in a data center and they just said, it was like kind of taped off which ports belonged to which uh, yeah. you know, uh, vendor and, or which uh, contractor. And it was an amazing concept. And, you know, I still... Uh, I, I'm just not really sure. Well, I, I think it was driven by our friend Richard Reed, the engineer, the Control Trends Engineer of the Year. You know, Richard was, uh, or they call him uh, Mr. Reed, right? I mean, these, these guys are, yeah, these guys are like, you know, 
two or three times older than he is and Mr. Reed this, Mr. Reed that. So he's, he must be just a heck of a consulting engineer. But uh, yes, I think he drove that home. Yeah. And uh, hey, listen, I want to switch gears. Talk about Silicon Valley a little bit. Have you ever heard of a singer? She's young. She's 30, I think, named Grimes. Yeah. You've heard of Grimes? I think so. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Well, no, her claim to fame is, check this out. This guy is so Grimes. interesting. So she's this 30 year old sort of pop singer, right? And uh, so she's having Elon Musk baby. That's what I heard. Yeah, Grimes yeah, and Elon yeah. Musk. My, my yeah. wife and uh, I think, it had, yeah. Yeah, she's a Canadian singer. Yeah, and yeah. She's, she's not your uh, standard uh, from the standard cut or cloth. She's kind of, you know. Well, well, she, well she's extremely interesting. She's uh, very free spirit. I can sort of see why I think Elon Musk likes her so much is that, you know, she, uh, she didn't start doing musical stuff until she was in her 20s. And she taught herself, you know, garage band and all that stuff and taught herself how to do music. So she performs and at the same time wants to produce her own stuff. So it's like you listen to her be, when she's interviewed. It's like, well, other people want to produce myself. Why would I want to do that? I want to create the whole thing. But her name is Claire or something. But, you know, so she's very conscious of creating this character. She talked about her brand, Grimes. So Grimes is just this character she made up that performs, right? Mm -hmm. So there's her, and then there's this character she puts out into the world that is the brand. And it got me wondering if Elon Musk thinks the same way. If there's just really like an Elon Musk is just like a Ken Sinclair type guy, you know, just very down to earth and brilliant. And he just has this persona that he puts out there in the marketing place to be extremely interesting and uh, all that no, stuff. No, I, th I think he's the real thing. I think he, um, my wife and I, uh, that's why I remember the name. Uh, she reminds me of, um, oh gosh, I'll think of it in a second. Uh, who's uh, Brad Pitt's old wife, uh, Jolie? Angelina Ange Jolie? Angelina Jolie, yeah, she reminds me a little bit of her. Well, how do you get her looking, being anything like Angelina Jolie? Because I'm looking at her picture. I just oh, her think, picture, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, uh, but you know, the big, Never mind the pouty lips thing, you know. Anyhow, the the um, hey, very attractive women. Are you, you, you are you saying gaudy lips or pouty lips? I don't know. I don't, you're not gonna let that gaudy thing go, huh? Gaudy ever. I love it. We're gonna call this the gaudy episode. No, so. no. Listen, uh, getting back to Elon, I I I was looking and reading and and an extraordinary where he comes from South Africa uh, to Canada to the United States and and you know he and his brother were just hugely uh, you know successful, you know and then you had uh, what PayPal and then. Uh, you know, what's the other one he did that uh, bought the other one out? Um, so you have um, I know he, PayPal. He, he did something else too, but uh, the he just was way ahead of the game. He was a, he was a prodigious child. He, he you know so some people I think are, are in, in, in blessed with you know uh, incredible you know abilities to understand physics and understand uh, farming. You know they they, they understand everything. And, right. And, well, you know, it's funny. I think I might have met him. I think I was in a class with him at MIT. I went up to MIT for this class for entrepreneurs about 10 or 15 years ago. And I remember, you know, they were just having different business ideas and you pitch them. And I remember they were pitching the PayPal idea. And, uh, you know, it was, and, you know, I'm pretty sure he was there, but uh, who knows? It's interesting stuff, but he is, he's a fascinating guy. And uh, yeah, Kenny Smyers. Um, and, and I love guys like him. I think they're going to help us figure it out. And, uh, any truth? Any truth is, remember you're going on the first uh, SpaceX journey. You know, I I, I don't know if I'd uh, be up for it anymore. I would have at one point in time, but uh, the, you know, it takes an incredible. Uh, I think you have to be in really good physical shape. I remember with some of the pilots when I was in the Air Force, how hard they worked out. You know, and and, and what tremendous shape they were in. I mean, they they got the best everything, the best eyesight, they had the best. You know, they were smart, but they also were incredible uh, physique. You know, they were they mm -hmm. were physical specimens where they had the right kind of uh, you know physiological. You know, they didn't have high blood pressure, and and and, and you know they they whittle these people down. The competition to become a pilot, the astronaut, is so incredibly. Uh, yeah. you know challenging and competitive because you know they start with ten thousand and work them down to ten you know and 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 so that uh i, I think you um when you make that kind of a thing i always impress me with the officer corps you know if you made the colonel that was like uh, colonel had this incredible authority uh, in, in you know the united states military in the event that we ever had the need for a colonel could marry people you know put people sentence people to to you know life imprisonment whatever they were endowed with an, an enormous amount of uh power uh you know you know if the need ever happened you know, but within the military of course they had it but you know, even if you have it in martial law or whatever uh you know there's there's 
game plans. I'm sure that the, you deploy the military, uh, you you would break up the, you know, the, these officers would become basically governors, mayors, and, and uh, almost like one of those movie things you see, like uh, the man in the high castle. Uh, so, right. but so so I think that when you see somebody like Elon Musk, you're looking at somebody who went through you know just all the universities and it just kept rising up. It reminds me of uh, one of your famous artist friends where. He, uh, Picasso, for instance, could do what the masters could do. He, he did it at 12 years old. He was bored. Yeah, he was incredibly yeah. gifted to the point where he was more uh, capable and, and competent than his, his instructors. Yeah. But, but hang on. I, I, wonder, I wonder your cycle back around, then we'll hop off because we've been going a long time. But, uh, but you know, getting back to Richard Branson and, and Elon Musk and those guys, I mean, you know, Branson is already selling tickets to Mars, right? I mean, so you would think that they would have to um, uh, create the experience in such a way that, you know, people that are not physical specimens could go along. I mean, obviously the pilots of these crafts would have to be you know, astronaut material, but, uh, but, you know, I mean, I think Branson's, you know, Richard Branson, Virgin Airlines and Virgin Records, his vision is we're going to travel to Mars in his lifetime. He's going to, he's selling tickets to go. He's building a place yeah, in Arizona. To, it's, to even, it's, from. it's even like ships though. I mean, you, what you can't do is you can't invite, you know, disaster. And if you have somebody that has a heart condition or whatever, or somebody that's 80 years old and they want to go to Mars, I'm, I'm, I would only be mean or anything, but I'm going to tell them, no, you can't come. Cause you know, you, you know, we don't have the ability to support, we don't have life support systems. We don't have medical capabilities. Right. Or so, so I think you'll have a, I, I, I do see it. I'd like to see it in our lifetime. Uh, you know, I do believe I we will. after seeing we will. those, uh, after seeing those, uh, you know, those, Elon Musk bringing the, the SpaceX, those two uh, booster uh, rockets landing simultaneously on those pads. I, I've never seen anything like that. It changed yeah. my whole concept because it, it proved that you could reuse, recycle rockets, you know, right. and, and you could reuse those things. So they could actually land on the moon, say, for instance, and be refilled with more fuel and then go to the next leg of their, their mission, whatever. Or, or, so the, the concept of reusing and re, refueling right. things, I'd never, never, never thought I'd see it, but I'd be sure. He's brain. Okay, Kenny Smyers, we'll listen with that. All right. Special thanks to our sponsor this week, KMC Controls, and our guest, KMC's only, Tim Vogel. Great stuff from Tim. So with that, remember, be bold, stay in control, be healthy, and uh, maybe just be a little gaudy this week. <laughs> Indeed, Aaron. Indeed. Kenny. <laughs> yeah, you can cut that stuff out.